Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're uh, plunging headfirst into a really fascinating dynamic playing out in the world of artificial intelligence. We're seeing like the simultaneous dawn of a super anticipated new venture and, well, the dramatic sunset of another one. We're going to unpack the launch of Mira Marathi's new company, Thinking Machines Lab. It's already made these huge waves with uh, just an unprecedented funding round. And right alongside that, we'll analyze the recent and pretty public demise of the humane pin. You know, that AI wearable promised a lot. Yeah, delivered well, not so much. Exactly. It's a really compelling look, isn't it? At the trial and error that's just inherent in innovation, especially you know in a field moving as fast as AI. What we're aiming to do today is sort of distill two critical, almost contradictory lessons from these stories. Lessons that I think are essential for understanding where AI is headed. We'll boil it down for you. You'll see the stark contrast, right, between a team assembling with just massive financial backing and another that, despite some pretty bold ambitions, just couldn't find its footing. Okay, let's peel back the layers on this new beginning first. Thinking Machines Lab. I mean, for months, there were whispers, right, about what Mira Marathi, formerly the CTO of OpenAI, was up to. Now, boom. It's official. Yeah. And what's really fascinating here is the context, her departure from OpenAI. It's actually part of this um, bigger trend we're seeing. Lots of talent leaving OpenAI. Sometimes it's framed as, you know, a protest over decisions there. Other times it's clearly about building something new away from those big company constraints. Marathi herself said she left to create space for, I think the quote was, my own exploration. And exploration seems to be uh, exceptionally well-funded. This company just landed a staggering $2 billion seed round. $2 billion seed. Right, valuing it at $10 million. That's mm -hmm. just mind-boggling. It absolutely blows away previous records. Those were usually, what, in the two to $400 million range? Yeah, maybe $450 million max mm -hmm. for a seed round. This is a whole different league. But doesn't this kind of, like concentrated capital just funneling into a few all-star teams, doesn't that risk creating its own kind of bubble or maybe stifling other innovations that don't have that kind of backing? You've absolutely hit on a crucial point there. Mm -hmm. It reflects this really dramatic shift. VCs are concentrating capital, fewer deals, much bigger checks. I mean, look at the numbers. AI startups pulled in a, a record, what was it, $73.1 in Q1 2025? Huge number. But the number of deals actually dropped to a five-year low. Wow. It's a strategy, right? Yeah. Driven by the high failure rate we're seeing in AI. So investors are thinking, okay, let's make massive bets, but on teams we know have a proven track record. Mm -hmm. The key takeaway here for anyone watching AI investment is this, the era of small scattered bets. This seems like it's over. We're in this uh, winner take most landscape now. Capital's consolidating. And speaking of proven talent, this team they've assembled, it's being called an all-star roster. It's like the next big chapter for the uh, open AI mafia, right? Exactly. You've got Anthropic, Save Super Intelligence Inc., and now this. Marathi's team includes John Shulman, OpenAI co-founder as chief scientist. Mm -hmm. Barrett Zoff is CTO. Jonathan Lackman, former head of special projects. And they haven't stopped there. They've pulled top researchers from DeepMind, from Meta, from Mistral AI. Mm -hmm. It's a real concentration of brain power. Yeah. Andres Karpathy summed it up pretty well, didn't he? He wrote something like, ah. Yeah. Very strong team, a large fraction of whom were directly involved with and built the chat GP miracle. <sighs> that quote really captures the interest. It really does. And it just highlights this in intense, almost cutthroat battle for talent in AI. Some estimates say there are fewer than, what, a thousand people globally who can really build these cutting edge foundation models. Crazy. So you see tech giants doing things like acqui hiring, mm -hmm. you know, buying whole startups just for the staff, mm -hmm. like Microsoft's deal for Inflection AI's team. That was 650 million, wasn't it? Mostly for the people. Exactly. And Sam Altman even said he heard Meta sees OpenAI as their biggest competitor. Apparently, Meta is offering signing bonuses up to $100 million. It's wild. The talent war is just off the charts. Okay, so this brings us to the uh, the burning question everyone's asking. Yeah. What is this all-star team actually building? Because their mission statements, you know, they sound good, but they do feel a little abstract. Yeah, a bit vague, maybe. Marathi tweeted, they're building three things. Helping people adapt AI systems for their specific needs developing strong foundations for more capable AI systems, and fostering open science. Okay. The goal is stated as, 
uh, simple. Advance AI by making it broadly useful and understandable. It's yeah. all about solid foundations, open science, practical applications. You're right. The broad strokes are there, but the specifics, mm -hmm. they're still kind of emerging. The company's website does highlight some key gaps they want to fill, like um, the scientific community's understanding lagging behind capabilities, or knowledge about training being too concentrated, yeah. or systems being hard to customize. Okay, so they want to bridge those gaps. Right. Make AI more understood, more customizable, more generally capable. You talk about human AI collaboration, building multimodal systems that work with people right. and focusing on frontier model, intelligence, science, programming, plus rigorous infrastructure. It sounds like they're building the uh, the bedrock, the core engines for future stuff. But like you said, it's still causing some head scratching out there. I saw one comment, uh, Cosmic Chaos, saying, good luck, but I'm still not sure what exactly you were building. Yeah, I saw that too. Another one was like, it kind of just feels like yet another group of world-class researchers vaguely gesticulating at the future. Where is the vision? Mm -hmm. And Swix pointed out something interesting, two notable omissions from their manifesto. The words reasoning and agent aren't used on the website. That is interesting. So what do you make of that? Is the vision just too abstract or is it so fundamental, so foundational that the end product just isn't obvious yet? I think it might be a bit of both, honestly. When you're building really foundational tech, the immediate product isn't always, you know, a shiny gadget. It's often a core capability that enables tons of other things down the line. And apparently, Marathi has structured the company, so she keeps the deciding vote on the board to mm -hmm. make sure her vision stays intact. Right. Control. So you put it all together. Yeah. Clear, if foundational, mission, an absolutely elite team, and this unprecedented funding, Thinking Machines Lab definitely feels like a, well, a new center of gravity potentially forming in the AI universe. Okay, so while that AI story is just starting its first chapter, let's pivot. Let's talk about an ending, a, a pretty dramatic, very public ending, the humane pin. Ah, yes. The pin. Less than a year after its big, splashy launch, it's officially dead. Humane announced HP is acquiring them. And gave customers, what, 10 days notice? Just 10 days yep. before the server shut down, rendering this, you know, pretty expensive device basically useless for its main job. Except checking the battery level, maybe. Right. Offline stuff, it's just a, quite a jarring end, isn't it? It truly is. I mean, this device, it was a bold attempt, right? An early shot at an AI assistant in a dedicated wearable, but boy, did it fall flat. And the reasons have been picked apart endlessly online. But the real question now is, beyond the obvious mistakes, what are the deeper lessons we can actually learn from this failure? What does it tell you? Well, the problems were just legion. It started at $699, instantly too expensive for most people. Right off the bat, yeah. Then the initial reviews were universally awful. Marquis Brownlee <laughs> calling it the worst product I've ever reviewed. <laughs> that video got, what, 8.5 million views? Yeah, that didn't help. Updates couldn't fix it. At one point, they were apparently processing more returns than actual sales. Mm -hmm. And then they even had to tell people to stop using the charging case because of battery fire risks. Just a cascade of problems. Absolutely. And the aftermath is pretty telling, too. HP says they're buying the team and the AI OS to create an intelligent ecosystem across HP devices. AI PCs, smart printers, conference rooms. Yeah. Gonzalo Nunes had that really stark take. The humane founders having to go work for AI for office jet printers at HP is the ultimate punishment for the prototypical Steve Jobs LARPer founder. Ouch. That is brutal. But you have to admit, there's a certain, I don't know, poetic justice to it for a product that aimed so, so high. It does feel like a come down, yeah. So how should we interpret all this? Is it just a blip? Investor Justin Duke seemed to think there weren't many big lessons. He wrote, Humane felt like a relic from a younger, more juiced, drenched era. Like vaporware from the start? Yeah, implying it was just a product of that, you know, frothy 2019-2021 VC excitement. Yeah. Maybe doomed from the start. That's one way to look at it. You know, wrong product, wrong time, maybe. But Chris Back offered a different, maybe more challenging perspective. He called Humane the perfect cautionary tale of how talented people get completely distorted from reality by staying at large, successful companies for too long. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, he basically questions like, is someone really a great product designer or do you just work at Apple? Implying the brand does the heavy lifting. Right. And he argues the only way to really test your abilities is to leave that shelter of these mega brands and build something from scratch. And crucially, he adds, throwing lots of money at the problem pre-launch isn't going to help you. 
That point about leaving the shelter really hits home. Do you think it's genuinely harder for people coming from, say, Apple or Google to innovate in that scrappy startup world? Is there a disconnect? I think there definitely can be. The constraints are different. The pace is different. The definition of success is different. Maybe it does distort your view of what the market actually wants or needs. And what does this whole debacle mean for AI wearables in general? Because a tech landscape changed so fast between their announcement and now. Totally. When the pin launched in April 2024, Google AI was still suggesting eating rocks. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah, roughly. And now, even small AI models can code pretty well. The underlying tech leapfrogged the hardware, maybe? Or was the hardware just the wrong idea to begin with? Well, that's the core question, isn't it? Do people actually want a standalone AI device like the pin? Jack Apple, the newsletter writer, thinks it's a form factor problem. He wrote something like, The future of AI isn't new hardware, it's upgrading existing software control. Basically, put AI into the devices we already have. Okay, makes sense. But then you have Dwayne, who thinks AI hardware will succeed, but only when it's 100% local with no cloud or API dependencies. So, privacy and offline capability first. Two very different takes on the hardware problem. Exactly. Looking back, it feels like there were so many red flags with Humane. Those um, overly earnest marketing videos, trying way too hard to be Steve Jobs-esque. Yeah, definitely a bit much. The price point, the yeah. sheer amount of money they raised before even shipping, it makes you wonder. But I guess figuring out what consumers actually want is going to be this huge process of trial and error. For sure. We are absolutely still in the experimental phase here. Yeah. And while it's true that these big, well-funded startups often struggle to invent totally new consumer experiences from scratch, yeah. You look at something like the Ray-Ban Meta AI glasses. Mm. They seem to be finding some traction, quietly. Yeah. So the whole category of AI wearables, I wouldn't say it's cooked just yet. The market's just being very, very selective. So we've looked at two really different stories today. One is all about huge funding, a star team, this ambitious, maybe slightly vague mission. Thinking Machines Lab, yeah. And the other, the humane pin, is just a stark reminder of how quickly things can go wrong, even with lots of hype and anticipation. And if you connect the dots, zoom out a bit. Mm -hmm. Both stories really reflect these huge forces in AI right now, that intense talent war we talked about. Right. And the way venture capital is evolving. On one side, you have investors pouring just unprecedented cash into teams they believe in, betting they can figure out product market fit. Massive bets on proven talent. Exactly. But on the other side, humane is this cautionary tale, reminding us that even tons of funding and big names from famous companies, that doesn't guarantee success. Especially when the market itself is still figuring things out so rapidly. Yeah, it's this constant push and pull, isn't it? Between the ambitious vision and just the cold, hard realities of building and selling a product people actually want to use. Mm -hmm. The AI universe is definitely finding new centers of gravity, like we said, mm -hmm. but it's also kind of littered with the wreckage of experiments that just didn't quite stick the landing. So where does this leave you, our listener? As AI keeps advancing at this breakneck speed, these two stories really highlight something important. The underlying tech. It's progressing incredibly fast. Mm -hmm. But the applications, the form factors that will actually make a difference, those are still very much up in the air. Yeah, the industry is step very much learning by doing. It's driven by amazing talent. It's fueled by massive investment. But it's always tempered by that real-world challenge. Do people actually need this? Does it solve a real problem? The future of AI isn't just going to be shaped by clever algorithms. It's going to be shaped by navigating this complex dance between the tech, the money, and what users actually embrace. Which leaves us with maybe this final thought to chew on. In an era where these incredibly powerful AI capabilities are becoming more and more accessible, is the biggest challenge really about building smarter models? Or is it about deeply understanding what people want AI to do for them in their actual daily lives? And just as importantly, what form do they want that interaction to take? Something for you to ponder until our next deep dive.